Welcome everyone to Walk On Perspective. I'm your host, Robert Boswell. Thank you so very much for joining us each and every week. You can find our show on any platform that you want to digest podcasts on. We're on Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube page. We're trying to grow that so that you can be up to date on our utmost video portion of the podcast. Without further ado, I did want to welcome and acknowledge Leroy Thomas of Old Dominion. Leroy, thank you for joining the show today. Uh, no problem. Glad to be here. And uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. You have an uh, incredible, what we like to call, holy grail of walk-on success stories. You started your career at Old Dominion as a walk-on and have since not only earned playing time, but become a full, uh, really a team leader of sorts. You're a starter. You played every snap of the entire year, which is unheard of, and have since earned a scholarship. I mean, I, I, we're going to unpack all of this, but... I, I want to know what has the ride been like for you? Uh, it's de definitely been a unique past couple of years. I mean, you know, in general for, you know, just people in general with uh, COVID and everything, it's been a wild couple of years, but uh, it's definitely been a unique ride. I'm definitely grateful for the path I have. And, uh, you know, just looking back on everything, you know, like I know uh, we'll get into the specifics and stuff later, but, you know, just overall, you know, uh, I wouldn't change anything about, you know, the path I took, you know, being a walk on. I think I've gained a lot, you know, on the field, off the field. It's been a great experience and uh, it's been a great, great few years. And I'm excited for the rest of my career here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for our listeners who want a little bit more context, can you fill them in? I think you're a redshirt junior, right? So that leaves you with what two more years of eligibility, if, if my math is right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So with all the red shirt COVID year stuff, I'm, uh, I got two more seasons left. Okay. All right. It, it's top, isn't it? With this, with this COVID year stuff, like you start doing the math, you're like, wait, so I've technically used this many years, but I've got the COVID year. So I've got this many more left. Like it, it's hard. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's weird. Cause like, it's like now just the whole process. Like when we talk to my like teammates or just people in football, I'm like, wait, so like, what year are you in the classroom? Like, what year are you actually in football? Like, because, like, I'm graduating, uh, getting my bachelor's this spring, but I'm a senior in the classroom, but I'm just, like, I just finished my sophomore season in the fall. So it was definitely, it's been it's weird, but, you know, we're bathing with it. It is, it is. And, and we're, we're going we're gonna to get into, you know, your your degree, your plans for after ball and all that. But let's let's get the rail, the, the, the track back on the rails, okay? I want to start – high school Leroy, all right? You're obviously growing into your frame. Uh, you're probably one of the bigger kids at your high school. Coach puts you on the line and I want, walk us through. How, when were you first exposed to football? Um, what position were you playing? I assume you were probably playing offensive line in high school, but tell me first off, where'd you go to high school? I know you're from Virginia, right? Yeah, so uh, I actually went to uh, Colonial Forge High School in uh, – staff of Virginia and I was uh, really fortunate to go there to have uh, my previous uh, coach you know Bill Brown uh, he's really good coach one of the best coaches in all all of Virginia and uh, his son is now the head coach there so you know shout out to them uh, that was a great school and I think uh, I'll get into that a big uh, reason of why I actually was able to walk on at ODU but uh, my football as far as football went uh, I always played you know sports growing up I was always decently good at sports like I was just picking up on stuff when I got older but you know I was a bigger kid and so like uh middle school I played fo football like AYF and stuff from like five years old all the way up until middle school then uh, I stopped playing in middle school started trying on like basketball baseball and other stuff like that and I actually you know really didn't have interest in football until even when I got to high school, so like my ninth grade year, I didn't play any sports. I, I tried to play on the baseball team, basketball team, didn't end up working out. And uh, my brother went, both my brothers went to the same high school as me and my brother played football. And I was like, you know, football, I got cut from the basketball team. Uh, I got cut from the baseball team. You know, football is the only sport at school that they don't cut anybody. So, you know, I always had a love for sports and football. So you know, my brother played, so I was like, I'm going to give it a shot. So my 10th grade year, uh, 
I joined and I played JV and I kind of was just like, it wasn't starting from square one because like I knew football, I watched football, like I was familiar with it, but like the whole like practice and just all, everything, like I had to kind of start over from the beginning. But I, when I uh, played football in high school, I was a uh, offensive lineman, but, but previously to that, like when I was in a like little league football and stuff, I was like, a, I had gained weight until like middle school. So I played like tight end safety when I was like younger. So, but uh, yeah, so I played a uh, D line was what I thought I was going to play for a while. So I was focusing on a uh, D line. who was like backup O lineman, but played a uh, JV. I, I did pretty good uh, towards the end of the year. I was kind of starting to get it kind of starting to be a little more aggressive. You know, I wasn't, I'm not gonna, I wasn't the most aggressive kid until probably my senior year. But so uh, my junior year, I was finally, you know, the year I could, you know, be on varsity. You know, most juniors play varsity. So we're in, uh, I was in like camp for high school that year. And uh, like my school, like I said, good coaching staff, like good, uh, we're known for being good at football. So like my school was, it's not just you get to play if you just like are a junior. Like there's some juniors, like they'll make you play JV just because like they didn't think you were ready or like, if you, even if you do make the team, like they'll tell you like you're not really gonna play. Like we made we were uh we made it to the state semifinals like I think three out of the four years I was there. So like we were pretty pretty good program. So my junior year I didn't I remember like a a real moment that stuck out to me in like that camp as I was struggling, and my head coach that uh coach Brown he came up and was like talking like some of you juniors like we're gonna we're gonna put you on JV like. I'm not going to deal with this type of stuff. And that like woke me up and like, there was a moment like where he's like, all right, you're on JV, you're on JV, you're on JV, we're separating. And he like looked at me and he was like, really like debating it. And he was like, all right, you stay here. But like, I always think back to that. And it's like not even a moment I told a lot of people about, but like, if I was a junior on JV, like I was just playing football really just cause like something to do my brother did it. Like, I don't know if I would have stuck with it like in that moment. So that was a moment that like, I was really grateful that happened, but going on in my junior year, uh, like I said, we went to the, ended up going to the state semifinals, uh, but didn't make it. But like, so I didn't play at all that year. I didn't start. Uh, I think I got in like, you know, garbage time, a couple of games when we were beating them by like 30 points. But like, I think I've only played like two games maybe, but like nothing serious. But in my senior year, I was like, you know, I'm going to sell out. I want to, one, I wanted to win a state championship and uh, college football was never, like, I was thinking, I was touring Virginia schools with my parents, like, thinking, like, all right, what am I going to do in the fall, like, SATs and stuff like that, but I was also, like, back in my mind, my coach told me, like, that spring, he's like, you know, like, you're a big kid, like, we've had guys here that, like, they have a breakout season, like, some schools start reaching out, so, like, you know, keep it in mind, so I listened to him, because, you know, like I said, he's, like, Virginia, he's, like, one of the Hall of Fame coaches, I was like, I'm going to listen to what he says, uh, took his advice and I just like really like bought into the whole process of like football you know I think one thing I could have went hard on was like the lifting and stuff but like as far as like football and stuff like that like that upcoming camp and summer like I went to some uh, camps for like colleges and around the area and then when that like camp came we were in camp I was like you know this is like my last season like who wants to like graduate college say like you never played or anything like that so I was like that was just my goal but I ended up doing pretty good I uh, ended up starting uh, and then I was just you know having fun playing with my like, playing with my friends we were doing pretty good and then like week five of the season week four this kid that I like had played football with him growing up uh went to the school Bridgewater College and he texts me and he's like hey like what's your number my coach wants to like uh he said that like he's looking at you and Bridgewater's like small D3 school. He's like, my coach is interested in you. And like, I was like, are you like joking? Like messing with me? Like no one wants to play. like, I'm a senior, like, and I wasn't playing for a couple of weeks, but he like told me to end up being serious. And then he reached out. And then as the season came on, probably a few more D3 schools started to reach out. And I started thinking like, you know, maybe I can actually play college football. And then like, as weeks go on, like, you know, we, we were, uh, did pretty good. So, you know, we get in the playoffs, we're playing, playing pretty good competition and we're playing some division one guys. And like, I wasn't too good in high school. I'm like, I think I can hang with these guys. So like when at that moment I started to realize that I just kind of went like every day after school, I just emailed like every school I could think of my huddle, like every, like all D1, D2, everything. I was like, I'm just going to see what I can do. Season goes on and starts to pick up. I got, a, uh, you know, just some D2 interests and then 
one day I made a Twitter and I would just like, I would like uh, tag all the coaches like every day. And like most of them wouldn't respond like D1. Cause like, you know, the most D1 schools they're recruiting is over like senior year. Like yeah. they're already on the next year. So, but I, I reached out to a uh, first O-line coach I had when I got here and uh, he told me and one of my teammates was actually uh, yeah one of my closest friends. He's like, yeah, come down to our game this weekend. And like, I'll never forget that moment. Cause that's like, ODU was like, I'll also get to that only D1 school basically that even like talked to me. So they're like, come to the game. And they had already told my friend like before, because he had like been successful. They had been talking to him for a couple of weeks about like walking on. And then, so I was like, okay, like maybe they'll like talk to me about that. And then I go to the visit, they were playing a uh, middle 10 in 2017. I go to that game. It was a great visit. I was honestly like, you know, just the whole time, like a real D1, like, school like I hadn't seen like facilities and like that so it was a great visit and then uh talked to the O-line coach and he was talking to me about like walking on and stuff and I was like oh yeah like definitely like I like I was in my head I was thinking like oh yeah like that's what I wanted to hear and he was kind of like nonchalant about it and was like yeah like we uh want to get some more guys from Virginia and stuff like that and then so the visit went on a couple weeks go by and the season ends and then I'm talking to my uh coach about like what schools are interested in me and stuff and it ended up being only like uh, some d2 schools in west virginia and uh i had contacted howard like messages but like nothing big so i ended up visiting some uh some smaller schools in west virginia and like on the way there it was like a snowstorm and like it was just when we got out there, like I had no internet and everything. So I was kind of like, yeah, like I can't go to school in West Virginia. Like my mom was like, yeah, like, I don't think we can do this. So then that goes on. And then uh, after that, I like have reached out to ODU and I hadn't talked to them in a while. So I was kind of like still wondering if I could, uh, you know, have the opportunity to walk on. Cause I know the like recruiting process is fluid. And then I just reached out and he was like, yeah, we're going to have like a walk on visit. And, uh, you know, we'd love for you to come. And then, you know, at the visit, we kind of, it was a, you know, cool experience. We got to talk to some guys on the team, but basically one thing led to another. And as soon as I got out of the visit, like the ride home, I just texted uh, the coaches was like, yeah, like uh, I want to walk on, join the team. So yeah, that was that. And that was how I got to, uh, you know, the commitment. And then I got there later that fall. So for a little bit more detail on that, was this a preferred walk on like the, your spot on the team was going to be there, assuming you wanted to go there, right? Uh, yeah, 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 it was a preferred walk on. Uh, they told me like, you know, on the walk on visit, they were like, yeah, like this is a, you know, you you guys are all preferred walk ons. Like, you know, if you want your team on the, your spot on the team is secure. So yeah, I was a, it was a preferred walk on and I was uh, able The only variable was if I would start in the uh, summer or like the when the first day at camp. But uh, as far as my team spot on the team, luckily, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a preferred walk on spot. All right. And and for our listeners who just maybe don't know the difference, uh, a lot of schools and, and not every school does it, but a lot of schools, they still have actual walk on tryouts, whereas open tryouts and you actually have to try out and then make the team. And then there's preferred walk ons where the coaching staff goes through the recruiting process and they may not have a scholarship available, but they do want you and your spot on the team is available. And it's one of those kind of wink, wink deals. Like, Hey, if you come in and you end up working out for us, then there could be a scholarship available for you in the future. So it, it just wanted to clarify that for some of our listeners who maybe aren't familiar with the term prefer walk on, you see it out there a lot. I, I do want to know a little bit more because you kind of glossed over it there Leroy I want to know you said that you were just blanket reaching out with emails and social media so how how were you introducing yourself to these coaches and was it just the head coaches was it every position coach how did you go about finding this database of assistant yeah. coaches across the country's email and twitter handles and what you said you weren't getting really any feedback would nobody email you back was no it was just complete ghosting you or did you have a couple of coaches say hey thank you but you know we're full at this time maybe try this person uh yeah so i'd say like uh it's definitely you know 
like you just mentioned like the responses it's pretty like uh you know you're not a good response rate like you know they're they probably get like I don't blame them like hundreds of emails a day hundreds of tags like I, I see now like my coach will like tweet something like completely unrelated to football like two minutes later he's got like five replies to his twitter like coach check out this so like yeah uh with that I didn't really get too much response but like uh once I realized like kind of heard that you know some some coaches were interested in me I would just you know I started like in my state like looking up like d1 d2 d3 and kind of going from there and then you know to find their uh you know contact information like I every school like I would just go to their uh you know, football page, go to roster. They usually have the coaches at the bottom and they usually have their emails at the bottom. So I kind of started to figure out what positions would email back more. So like I would go like people that were directors of recruiting, like the GAs for like O-line coaches. Like I kind of started to figure out, but, you know, as far as like figuring out what everybody's contact information was, it was really just like Google or like, you know, my friend, uh, <laughs> my friend was like supposed to, he actually got a preferred welcome with me. The guy I was, sorry, his name is Will uh, Carroll. He was a left tackle for my high school team. So we kind of like would bounce ideas off each other. Like, like he told me, he's like, yeah, like ODU's coach like responded to me, like just keep, keep messaging him. Like see if he responds, like he checks it clearly. So I was like, so, so you knew you had, you had an idea that that might be a good landing spot. I, I knew at least that like it was going to get watched. That was more of what I was like, because like at some, I was like at some schools, like, yeah, it's probably not even going to get seen. But when I saw that he took the time to watch it and like that since he had contacted him, like he then knew my school and stuff like that. So uh, I ended up reaching out to him through Twitter, but I had to do it like I had emailed him and I got no response. And then I had reached out to like different people and then yeah, I went into Twitter and then that guy, that's when I finally got my response but yeah I, it was uh, definitely with the help of my, some of my friends like finding all the different schools because like you know you can't really think of all the D2 like FCS schools out there so like some of them you kind of have to go like state by state like football programs and then find a little more but yeah that was pretty much how I went about it, just Google. You hear about it all the time talking with coaches at both the collegiate and the professional level about how how can you have you know, players ascend to this level that started out as walk-ons. They truly didn't get an opportunity anywhere with a scholarship. And it's just because the recruiting process, it's not perfect. You see late bloomers like yourself all the time that they really grow into their own and get their first real opportunity their senior year in recruiting nowadays. It just starts so early. And if you're not getting legitimate looks by your sophomore year, you're already late to the party. But Every single year you see it just like yourself. I mean, there's countless guys that are just excelling in the National Football League right now who started out as walk-ons between Baker Mayfield and J.J. Watt, Josh Norman. I mean, the list goes on. And I hope to see your name up there with the greatest of the greats here in a couple of years. I want to fast forward, Leroy. You make the decision. You're going to walk on at Old Dominion. Yeah, it's move-in day, you're getting to the dorms, you're, you're wide-eyed and you're excited about your new, your, your whole caseload that you got to do with your school and your studies and you're trying to get acclimated to life without mom and dad and figure out how to live on your own. You got to worry about laundry. What was that first team meeting or first practice like where you're looking around and you're like, oh, oh, this isn't high school anymore. Oh, oh yeah, okay, they, they mean business. And like dudes are as big as I am here okay yeah. this is this is legit yeah uh honestly yeah there was there was a few moments of like like okay like yeah this is college but like you know like I said uh previously like coming into uh ODU like you know being the college I went to we've got a few people that went to play college football which I'm I'm thankful for at least that I kind of knew at least a little bit what I was getting to and like my, my coach would tell me like uh we had a safety here from uh, my school, my freshman year, his name was Sean Carter, also a walk on, also earned a scholarship. So that was also influential, you know, me uh, coming here. But uh, he told me, he's like, Yeah, like, I hope you know, like, I owe to you, like, Sean's not going to let you be soft. Like, he's not going to have someone come from like our school and, like, you know, you got to, you're going to have to turn it up a notch when you go to college. But, 
you know, talking about moving day. So luckily, uh, how I don't know how it works everywhere, but as walk ons, there's a group uh, that there was one kid that uh, went, got their like start of summer classes, the summer session. And then me, I got there uh, first day at camp, which is interesting experience that uh, I'll get into. And then there's another group that gets there like the first day of classes. And I think it's because of like some uh, rules for camp numbers and stuff like that. But it's like uh, we they gave me a workout program to do while I was at home to like get me prepared for that type of stuff. But uh, I don't nobody in the, like the country. You, you can't compare working out at like, you know, with division one strength coaches, like the pace of a workout, especially from high school. I don't even know what it's like. So it helped, I'm guessing, like a little bit like it would have been worse if I didn't. But uh, that was a big thing for me when I first got there. So like I get there the first day of camp. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm excited. I go in and a funny moment that uh, happens is like I'm walking in and like there's these guys just watching film and like they thought that we were like high schoolers, like on a recruiting tour, like because we're going like walking in a line past like past all of them and they're like getting ready for the first day at camp and they like thought we were high schoolers and I'm like, like no, like we're your teammates. But that was funny. But then so uh, the first day of like actual practice rolls around. And uh, the moment I noticed that it was like not high school, I would say it's like immediately like in the stretch lines, like it's not like high school. Like we kind of just like, you know, like touch your toes, like do a couple of things and then you get going. But like we were like started with a full lap around the field in like the middle of August. And then after after like stretching, I'm almost like I'm tired. And then they're like, all right, like jog everywhere you go, like next period, next period. I'm like, oh, this is like, this is like bad. And then, uh, we had that that fresh my first camp which is like it was just bad luck for me it was like also the hardest camp that like like other people who also it wasn't their first camp said that it was like a very hard camp so I just was unlucky but like we had uh like five or six gas it was the first day of practice which is like down back down back across the field in full pads and like I did like three of them and like it was I was dead tired and we're like about to start the fourth one. And like, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And then we just like, we run it. And then like halfway through, like the head coach is just like, like, just get him out of the drill. Like he's like, he hasn't been here. Like he's not, it's somewhat not my fault that I wasn't in shape, but like, he was like, just get him out of the drill. But like I was getting like laps in the gases. And I was like, definitely that first camp, like, you know, the conditioning, it was really hot. Just like the whole pace of practice and like, the whole like grind of camp like I had no introduction like but I had talked to a couple guys over the summer like uh there was another kid who walked on me with me one of my uh good friends Darius Savage uh he had got there in the summer he was the only walk on that got there in the summer so he was kind of telling me like what's going on what they were doing what I was getting myself into but you know actually getting there the biggest like you know immediate like this is college that kind of woke me up was like the lifts for like first of all like I was struggling in the lifts and like just the conditioning and pace of practice like that was a big jump from high school and that was definitely something I didn't take serious enough in high school I'll say that but I got exposed pretty quickly <laughs> and you mentioned just the at practice was running everywhere I, I mean that's you see that almost everywhere I mean that's pretty universal uh, across division one or or what we now know as uh FBS level competition is in practice there is no loafing you truly do run everywhere you're supposed to be at every point of practice in practice as opposed to in high school I mean it's so much more structured with every single period and it's, it's there's like a whole practice plan sheet that's prepared in advance of like exactly what you're going to accomplish every day so there's there's really just no time for messing around and I mean you know from high school days like that's probably the, some of the most memorable yeah. moments you have is just messing around or practice there's so much downtime in between like when it's your turn to do stuff at practice and that's not the case in college ball yeah not at all like and the biggest thing to me was like in high school like I was once I started like started at O-line like my senior year and that was like the switch I was an O-lineman like we split our practices up offense and defense so like once we did offense, like, I was just, like, I would do a couple D-line drills, but I didn't really do anything. And, like, another big thing was, like, when I in high school, 
when I go against it, like I would go against the scout team because I was starting and like, you know, the scout team is usually JV players, but like that freshman camp, like you, I could, that was also like a, you know, a big wake up now that I'm thinking about it. Like uh, my freshman year, like the D line, like the D line room that uh, ODU had was like great. Like I remember we had like guys like uh, O'Shane, you know, he's one of the, you know, best players ever played here. He was, uh, there, you know, Daniel Poe, we had, uh, who else was there? You know, we had like Pat told just like, you know, Tim Ward guy on the chiefs now. So, you know, it was, I can't even think of them all, but you know, there was a lot of, that was probably one of the strengths of our team. And every day, like going up against those guys, I was just like, you know, when I'm on like doing scout team, it was like somewhat, I knew going into like college, like talking to my coach and talking to like, uh, people that were playing college football like there's gonna be like a learning curve like those guys like have been playing football for like four or five years so like it's gonna be like that but it was just like somewhat discouraging you know, like, every day I was just like you're like trying your hardest and you just like it's the same result for a couple of weeks so fill us in and let's fast forward from that part of your college journey where you're really just learning what it takes to just be a part of that team to now where obviously not only did you break through the lineup and are starting in a meaningful part of the team, but I also have, have been looked at as a leader and have earned a scholarship and I've gotten all this recognition. Fast forward. When did you start to realize that one, like you, you definitely belong and you can hang with these guys and when when did you start to see all of that come to fruition, at least with yeah. recognition from the coaches? Yeah, so uh, it was like I would say I got confidence that I could play college football like at the Division One level fairly quickly, and like I, and I went into the mindset like you know if I'm gonna do this, you know I'm gonna be a walk on. You can't like you know you can't have any doubts. Like I'm like I can play Division One football. I know I can. So you know that was the mindset I had coming in, but. Uh, when I got into that fall, first fall camp, I was still doing scout team. Uh, you know, the first kind of like recognition I got that was like, you know, you're doing good is uh, in the mid, like right in the middle of the season, like bye week, they're like, we're going to announce a couple scout team guys that, you know, we think should get some recognition for what we're doing. And, uh, you know, that happened. It was me, a couple other guys, and they, just, you know, gave us a shout out from the team, gave us some gear. And that was, you know, I was like, okay, like, you know, that's, pretty cool and then you know that rest of that season I think I did I got a lot better I think that was you know a big thing about me as a walk-on is like and kind of me starting football in high school is that like I had so much to work on like I was still figuring football out when I graduated so like I got that first season I think I made like huge strides and like uh one of our the offensive coordinator we had at the time did come up to me and he was like uh you know like you can you can definitely play at this level and you know uh, I try, you know, I, it was definitely good to hear that. But one thing I tried to do, like, throughout my career and, you know, still thus far is, like, I don't want, I don't, like, what, try to let what people say, like, get me too, like, high or, like, boosted up or, like, too low or, like, you know, I just try to, like, stay level and just try to, like, you know, get better every day. So it was nice hearing that. But that's next spring was when I was really, like, you know, getting reps. So uh, that, like, my first spring ball, uh, I started getting reps more with like the twos and not doing a scout team stuff. And that was, you know, it was kind of a, a downward moment in like the football playing time is like football is why. Cause uh, you know, I was getting the twos reps and uh, I just, you know, didn't have as, as good of a spring ball as I wanted. And like, I started to get a little better at the end, but you know, the guys we had in the room at that moment were just, you know, I was getting outplayed. And uh, when we ended spring ball, we had like our exit meetings and our coach was like, yeah, if I'm not going to lie, if we travel right now, you wouldn't be on the travel roster. And, you know, as a freshman, like, you know, you don't, it's not like, I guess every freshman doesn't travel, but, you know, I wanted to be on the travel roster. So, you know, that summer uh, I moved in with, uh, he just graduated, uh, Isaac Weaver. And uh, there was uh, some other guys, Jason Aller, he was here at the time, and uh, Brandon Smith, who were all linemen. They were all older guys, you know. Isaac, for sure, you know, uh, anybody that knows about ODU football, you know, the way that, like, he approaches uh, football, you know, living with him that, uh, like, summer before 
uh, that fall kind of showed me like how hard people that are good at like football, like work and like how much they're bought in. And uh, that kind of like, I started taking like the weight room more serious and like, you know, trying to like work harder and like trying to really, really understand everything. And uh, that fall camp before 2019, uh, going into my retro freshman year, I think it really started to pay off. Uh, I had a pretty good camp. Uh, I ended up I ended up running with the the twos at the end of camp. So uh, I, that was you know really good in my eyes, especially as a walk on. You know, getting to actually work up into the you know ones and twos uh, of the depth chart. So you know that was a good experience. Uh, I was behind Tony Barnett, who uh, uh, was like a senior at the time really one of the, you know, best old linemen that's been here since I got here. And uh, he also was like, coincidentally, like, he never, ever, he, like, he had some record, like, he didn't miss any snaps in, like, an entire season. And, like, I, I know you said that about me before the thing, but, like, uh, I don't want to, like, you know, some people have actually did that. I sat out, like, it was a couple reps, so, like, I didn't play, like, every single rep. But, like, Tony, I'm pretty sure, played, like, every single rep in one season. So, like, playing around like, back behind a guy like that, I didn't get any like reps like that season at all. Like he didn't you know, really go down. It wasn't like a rotation type thing either where he's going to ever come out. So it's pretty much if he didn't get hurt, I wasn't going to go in. So, you know, that season happened. I didn't get any reps. Uh, and then we go to the next spring ball uh, coaching staff change, which was like a, I would say that was a real pivotal moment in like me as a walk on and like, I didn't want I didn't really view it as like starting over because like I knew that I had kind of shown the coaching staff somewhat that I was like capable of playing. But uh we also like went one and eleven that year. And it was like, you know, not the best year. So I was embracing the change, but uh we got that season. And I knew like, you know, as a walk-on and a new coaching staff, like you're gonna everything that you like did work for, like they're just gonna view you as that, like a walk-on. Uh so, you know, that happened and then I was uh, bottom of the depth chart again, which, you know, I didn't let, cause you know, I didn't really get, I didn't get any reps the year before. So it's not like I had game film to like show them I could play. So uh, the next year, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, that's actually probably a good time to unpack some of that anyway, Leroy. So just to paint a little bit more picture, you're, you're telling the story you're going from, I guess it's your sophomore year now into your junior year, just for kind of a timetable here. Oh yeah. 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 The coaching. Okay. So I just wanted to fill into our listeners just because my experience with O'Lyman, both as a player myself, having played with several teammates and then just getting to know offensive linemen, they, they probably do themselves a disservice, not telling people just, how technical the position is like to tr to truly get a realistic opportunity before you're like a junior or a senior is almost unheard of because of the difference going from high school level ball to college I would argue honestly outside of maybe quarterback the hardest transition going from high school ball to college ball is at the offensive lineman position one because you're you, you're not you got to you got to get your body ready for the line of scrimmage at the collegiate level. So you need a couple of years to develop just in the weight room. Like you talked about, like you didn't realize how serious you really had to be with the weights and with the nutrition and with your rehab and, and all of that. And then two, just how technical the position is in high school. I mean, you're generally the biggest guy going up against your competition. You just, you, you overpower them. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the game there. And then when you get to the next level, it's all about your hand placement with your punch, your sets. It's, it's such a technical position that does not get the credit it deserves for how difficult it is just to play and let alone play at a young age. And you're, you're so I wanted to help paint that picture during that moment where you're going from not just a, not just a sophomore, you're already one of the younger ones on the team, but a walk-on guy, right? Like yeah. breaking into that lineup is hard for even the highest recruited level scholarship athlete at either their freshman or their sophomore season because of the difficulties I just laid out. 
being an offensive lineman and you started to break into that rotation as a walk-on and being an underclassman that's incredible because of the level of difficulty involved i just thought it was important that we painted that picture for our listeners yeah and uh yeah that kind of uh reminded me of where i was at you know that semester you know and when i kind of started to like get more reps with like you know the twos and the ones like you're saying like yeah you start to really get exposed for like you can't have any, they, uh, the recognition I think I got from my coaches for, you know, the scout team and kind of how I went about things. My first spring ball was kind of just from like, you know, I think I'm a guy, like I'm gonna do things the right way. I'm a listen. I, I think I'm good at taking coaching. I like I'm physical and I'm going to play hard, but you know, that's only going to get you so far, especially, you know, here, like you really got to be technically sound. And, uh, I was struggling with that, but you know, we got the new coaching staff and, uh, 2020 beginning of uh that season after 2019 and that was a you know really eye-opening coach you know that was when we got coach uh, Rhino, my current offensive line coach and uh you know he really really knows a lot about uh the game you know coach Ronnie and like our staff now as a whole they really know a lot about uh the game and they emphasize like teaching us uh the game and making sure we understand you know football as a whole so yeah that has at that semester, I think is when I took really big strides in understanding like how much of offensive line play. Like I knew it, but like like how you were saying, but like I found it even like how much is determined like on tech like your technique, like just like game IQ, like like stuff like that. And we would see like we'll still see like NFL film and stuff like that. So yeah, that was definitely eye opening. But I the way that uh our coaching staff you know teaches football and I think specifically how he teaches the O-line and gives us so much information you know one helps us in games but just like you know as an individual as a player just as someone who likes football honestly like I've got like a way better understanding for football and offensive line play so you know that season I you know I was starting to you know feel good about uh you know the all the techniques and learning stuff and then you know COVID happened so that's like right after we get a new coaching staff like three months after we get a new coaching staff pretty much because uh yeah that's just how it played out so then we're all virtual and like kind of how i was just talking about the technical stuff all we're talking about for until we go back is just like techniques and schemes of how they did it at uh penn state and stuff like that and so i learned a lot of technique and stuff like that but then we got into a uh, fall fall 2020 and then so we got back we're finally starting to get into the groove of things. And I think like we start camp getting ready for the COVID season and uh, we got our season canceled and we were like one of, I don't remember this number, like one of two, three schools in the country that like actually ended up getting like not playing a single game of football for FBS. So yeah, that was uh terrible, especially, you know, being a walk-on and I'll kind of like get into, you know, why that I was not, uh, yeah, we were one of three not to play. So, you know, being a walk-on, it's COVID, which is already like, you know, we're low on funds, like, you know, schools in America, like there's no fans, there's no tickets or anything. So like, I think being a walk-on during COVID was already hard enough, but like being a walk-on during COVID and not having a season, like not having an opportunity, even like getting games was definitely not uh, the like, you know, best for situation I wanted to be in, but uh, I, I think I really embraced that time period. And it was really just like, we, uh, it was just like us, like our team, that was all, we just went against each other for the, like, we got like a fall camp, like approved, like a type of thing. Cause we weren't playing. So like, there wasn't any, as many rules, but we got finally approved to have like a camp type of thing. And I think I got a lot better in that. And that was when I, I started, uh, started working in with the one, started getting some first team reps, not like, you know, full time but uh leaving that fall camp was definitely like you know coaches started talking to me my position coach you know head coaches were telling the head coach was telling me like you know uh you've got an opportunity to like play you've got an opportunity to be in the starting lineup so after that fall you know as much as it was uh, unfortunate that we didn't get to play and you know it was a very like you know long felt really long and it just was not fun watching everybody play across the country but I think it helped me a lot as a like a football player, you know, O-line, I think I got a lot better. I think I got a, a lot stronger. And uh, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to play in games a lot more, like, you know, just our team in general. 
but you know after that so uh we go into that next spring ball and this is a uh, the like last year's spring ball so i'm uh finally getting a uh, first team reps uh, i'm doing you know pretty good i think i had a, a solid spring ball and uh i was starting to know you know like get the hang of everything and then so we end spring ball and uh i was still getting first team reps but you know nothing is a uh, nothing set in stone until, you know, camp, so much stuff can happen. But, you know, finally this uh, past camp, past summer, you know, I really started to, uh, you know, buy in that summer, like, and, you know, working really hard. Like, you know, I was just thinking like, this is, this is my opportunity. It's like everything I wanted for was like for that upcoming camp. Cause it was a set. I knew that camp was going to be like position battles for the starting spot or like, that was going to be my chance. So that summer, I, I tried to work really hard. I was in the film room and uh, it was kind of just like trying to sell out to get, you know, because I knew this was like a that upcoming fall camp is going to be the big like, you know, time period for me to get a scholarship. And I'd also like, you know, being a walk on kind of pay attention to these things like they haven't they haven't gave somebody a scholarship in a while. Like you're starting to think about that. So then that that camp comes and uh, I'm taking first team reps and like I'm, I that like that camp I just tried to take it every day like are we our team like you know philosophy is like one and oh like that was really how I did like every day just like take it day by day don't think about you know the scholarship just practice and like get better at practice and that was also a piece of advice I got from uh one of our coaches he's like you know don't play thinking that don't play to like get a scholarship or don't play with like the scholarship just like you know over your head is like just play and know that like if I play good and if I execute like positive things are going to happen yeah that's actually what coach Ronnie had told me one time like just know uh, if you do things right if you play well just positive things will happen and that's kind of the mentality I had going to that camp and I you know I strung a good couple of weeks together in camp and you know uh we had our last scrimmage in the camp and I started in that so I was you know I'm thinking like I made also one thing I like made sure not to uh, do, like I was really conscious of, was, like I really didn't want to get my parents' hopes up of like, cause that like I would tell them like, oh yeah, like I'm getting first team reps, but like, you know, the, nothing's set in stone until like, you know, we're getting ready to play our first game. So, you know, I would kind of like give them updates, but like I wasn't, you know, saying too much. We played our last scrimmage and I started, I, you know, I got all the ones reps. And so I was like, you know, pretty confident, but it's, oh, it was almost like, you know, as a walk on, it's like, it was like hard to believe up until like, it got like officially said, like closer and closer, like I was really going to. So like, you know, I just treated it up until like, you know, up until game day, like, you know, competing for the spot. And then uh, we did our, we played our last scrimmage. I played pretty well, but uh, I remember driving all my, like my friends home because it was uh, at the scrim, the stadium. And so we're driving, and one of the freshmen was like asking me some, something about how I was a walk-on got caught, caught brought up. And he's like, you're a, like, you're a walk-on. Like, uh, I didn't know that. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, when people come in and come and go and I've been here for so long, it's like, you know, it's hard to tell. So he I was like, yeah, but he's like, Oh, I, like, I didn't think that. Like I would assume like you've been taking like the starter reps. And I was like, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, it's not up to me, but, and a couple of other of my friends were like, like, you're a walk-on. Like, we didn't know that. And I was, I was like yeah like I've this conversation like kind of happens a lot when you're walking on so I'm like yeah yeah it's like especially if you're like getting reps like that and I'm like yeah whatever whatever so then that happens but that was really coincidental because like it hadn't happened those conversations hadn't happened too much that fall but uh the next day we had a team meeting after the uh scrimmage and he our coach played a couple of scrimmage clips and uh one of them he like said you know good job Leroy so that kind of like got my ears up like he shouted me I was like you know that's good had a good scrimmage but I still wasn't really thinking too much of it and then uh he's every day like how we do our team meetings we read a quote so he has us he's like uh he pulls up a quote some random quote and he's just like uh Leroy read it and he said it like he said my name a little too fast because like the way he does it is like he scans the room and he's like oh like you're gonna read it today but he like it sounded when he said it, I was like that he didn't even look at me that sounded a little too fast but I read it and then uh, it was about like, you know, I, I think the exact quote was like, I've earned the respect of my, my teammates. And it was like kind of about because of how like I, you conduct yourself. And then he reads that and uh, he started, you know, telling me that like he thinks I was a person that like, you know, 
kind of was a good representation of the quote. And then he told me uh, what you've also earned is a scholarship. And then just like all the whole line, like everybody in the room just started cheering. It was like, you know, it was like those moments like that, like I had always seen, like uh, people had always asked me like before that, like, oh, like if you get on scholarship, do you want it to be like some big thing or anything? Like, I was always like, like, I really don't. Cause I had heard like people that like just a meeting with the coach, or, like, I was like, I don't really care. Like I, that was the least of like what I was thinking. Like, I just wanted to get it. But like in that moment, it was like, it was just the craziest feeling. Like as soon as that happened, like everybody was going crazy. And I was just like, I was holding back tears, but it was just, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's just a flood of emotions as calamity ensues and you're probably borderline concussed as all of your, your fellow teammates are hitting you over the top of the head and congratulating yeah. you. And once the couple of days had gone by, you probably had time to kind of process what it really meant for you, but that's, that's a tremendous story and a great way to do it. So you, were you kind of alluding to it right there, Leroy, were you kind of, had a sneaky suspicion when he i mean he, he just says leroy like really quick like you're like wait a minute yeah. something's like, up something's up yeah. here yeah and like yeah after talking to like my friends about it i guess like the radar for them had went off like a little like my two uh like two of my close friends like uh nick salivari and isaac weaver they were uh telling me like that they had like kind of realized when he started talking and like they were looking at each other but like it didn't really hit for me until like I started reading it and I was like, like, if this isn't, I was reading, I was like, if this isn't me getting a scholarship, that's like, seems a little too coincidental, like for him to do that. And then when like, when he finally started, like when he started talking about me and it was a little like long, I was like, oh, like, I think it's about to happen. But like, I don't know, kind of just out of habit as being a walk on, like, you don't let anything like, you don't try to let anything like tip you off or like, you'd be like, oh, is that a hint at a scholarship? Because that's just, you know, that'll just leave you to like get yourself upset so it was honestly I kind of was starting to get it but like up until the moment that like I really really heard him say it it's like somewhat hard to like believe that like it was about to happen but yeah he definitely looking back it was probably a little more obvious to like the rest of the room than it was to me but yeah a little bit so after that moment after it had obviously settled in and you processed what that meant not that you lack confidence or anything, but did you find that, that that kind of gave you that confidence boost that everything that you were doing, indeed, you were doing it the right way and just gave you more fuel for your fire to continue ascending? Uh, in a way, yeah. I think I was already, you know, pretty uh, pretty uh, confident player. And, like, I knew, you know, that, you know, even without a scholarship, because I didn't really know how it was going to work. Like, maybe they wanted to see me start. Or maybe they wanted to see me produce on the field so like you know preparing for the first game I was thinking you know like I can play like I'm gonna play fine like you know I belong here so I don't think it was really like confidence per se but it was definitely uh good to like get recognition for like the way that I had been doing things and like I had like you know being a walk on the whole you know like as a walk on just how it is, is like, you know, working hard, doing everything everybody else does and not getting the recognition. So, you know, getting the recognition for that was, you know, definitely like a great feeling. And, you know, mm -hmm. just being on like going forward, knowing I was on scholarship, you know, I feel like it allowed me to like, just focus, like put all my, like, not that I wasn't putting effort towards football, just like weight off my shoulders, like just get ready for the season. Like there's no, you don't have any like, all like ulterior uh like goals like it's not about it's just about the team now like let's just win like I wasn't like trying to get a scholarship I'm just trying to win so like once I got that off my uh plate going forward it definitely was like nice to be able to focus and like I you know I felt going forward like I don't know there's definitely moments where it was like crazy to think about like I that I actually like had achieved it and I was like you know I actually did it like I actually got to do all this stuff and like there was definitely those moments like that which uh you know was nice I think it get, definitely gives me like motivation going forward and just like you know I know that's, that's just an example of like showing me like if you know you stick at something like you know however unrealistic it sounds like you know just keep going and you know something can like happen of it if you just keep at it so it's definitely a good you know motivation reminder you know if anything goes wrong like you know 
times like during the season, you know, things didn't go my way. I didn't always have the best of games, but, you know, just remind myself like where I started and where I'm at is definitely like, you know, motivation for me. That's actually a perfect place to segue to this most recent season, talking about if at first things don't go your way, just continue to do what you know is right and what got you there and it will pay off that could not have rang more true with the type of season that you guys had uh, you come in you're a scholarship player now you start every game and the season is kind of a roller coaster it's a tale of two two halves of the season right like the first part of the season things are not going well but then something clicks something happens you guys come together and the second part of that season i mean y'all start tearing off some wins enough to actually become bowl eligible and then have the birth there in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I mean, talk to us about this season and was it just that team mentality of of not getting down on yourselves? Uh, was there a, a meeting where it was like, okay, we need to get this thing back on the rails? I mean, just so incredible to see a complete and total turnarounds from, from a team where you see so often where a team, maybe get all the guys won't be bought in after going through adversity, or maybe you got some coaches that are possibly looking to go elsewhere and they're not as focused on the task at hand, but y'all really did take that team mantra you were telling me about of just win the day one game at a time. And it started culminating in all these wins that you peeled off the second half of the season. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so uh, this past season, you know, just in general, like the 2021, like, you know, ODU team is, uh, that's just, you know, it's been like, it was a great experience overall. You know, that's like toughest group of guys I've ever been around, just like probably like the most fun that I've ever had playing football. And, you know, it was kind of like, just, you know, from speaking like personally first, like from my perspective, uh, I hadn't got to play except so like I didn't play at all in uh, 2019. I hadn't got to play football since 2017 before we played uh, Wake Forest our first game. Like that was the time I, that was when I had taken my last snap of football. So just like the 2021 season, like there was just so much hype around it. Like when we first started, like you know, for me, like as an individual, like well, we're playing an ACC school my first game, and I'm telling every like my family and my friends like. You know, like, yeah, his first start, it's, like, on ESPN, like, next week. And it was Friday, so it's, like, only three games on. So, like, yeah, I'm, like, just, like, it, that was, you know, crazy for me and, like, exciting and a lot of stuff was, uh, you know, building up to that moment. But even as a team, like, we hadn't played it in a year. We had the COVID season. We had a new coach. Uh, we had so many, like, transfers, new two freshman classes that nobody had seen play a game because one was during the COVID and one had just got there. So it was uh, really like, let's see what ODU is about. Let's see what all like these guys are about. They're not the team. They're not the same team from 2019. Like, let's see what they can do. So, you know, as the season went on, uh, a game for me that stuck out, like, as you were saying, like to keep going was uh, like Liberty, the middle of the season, uh, Liberty and Buffalo, I, I didn't have the best games and like I didn't play as well as I wanted. And, uh, you know, up to that, like, you know, Wake Forest was our first game of the year, AC, ACC school. And, you know, we as an O-line played pretty good. I thought that I, you know, I played a uh, decent, you know, game, obviously, you know, that was, didn't go as we wanted it to. But, you know, as that my first college game, you know, watching the film, I thought I did some good things. And then, you know, leading up to that, we played Hampton the next week, broke the school rushing records. You know, things are trending up. I'm like, you know, I, I held my own against the ACC school. Like, you know, I can I can play. Just more reassurance that I can play here. And then, you know, Liberty and Buffalo, I didn't have the best games. And, like, it was kind of like, you know, not a moment like, can I play here? But, like, it was kind of like, you know, waking up like you got to – like, I've had the bad game, and the next week, the next game is still there on Sunday. So, like, you know, you got to – keep persevering you got to go but you know towards the middle of the season you know, you know all the games like I think the biggest thing is like there wasn't like a big moment in the season where it was like everybody's like all right like you know this is where it all turned it was just like we never like it's not like we the first half of the season we're getting like you know blown out the games aren't even close like you know there was a couple games that uh we didn't play our best football but like you know Buffalo is like comes down to the last couple plays of the game, you know, Marshall, UTEP, 
those were, you know, games that we could have won. We played with them and like a couple plays, you know, were in those games. So I think we knew that we were capable of doing that, you know, like kind of like I was saying, like, I knew that I could play against, you know, this level of competition, but we just had to like put it all together. And, you know, one point that I think was pretty uh, pivotal in the season was uh, the Buffalo game, because I think it's like, you know, up until that point, you know, we're down 735 at halftime and we bring it back to 3435, which is like, you know, 28 point comeback is especially in college football is like, you know, really hard to do. So like we did a lot of good things as an offense and we realized like, you know, one thing that like our coaching staff has said, like, you know, don't be surprised. Like you guys are talented. Like you can't be surprised when things go good. Like that's how it's supposed to be. Like you guys just got to play with that confidence. Like we're going to make plays because we're capable of it. And, you know, I think we started to, kind of play with a little more confidence, kind of come out, you know, expecting to win games, expecting to make plays and stuff like that. I think uh, that was like, you know, a big difference. But uh, I just think the biggest thing was like, we never lost like focus and like, you know, one and oh, we really truly did like buy into that. And, you know, you know, I've only like, I've been at ODU for, you know, four years and just, you know, seeing how that many people like all bought in, like at in games, like we're, we were like we would talk and like we're about to go out for a big drive like we're talking like one and oh like just take it one play at a time one snap at a time like take it everything one day at a time and just you know focus on getting better at that and like there was one quote that our coach put up uh I don't even know if it was during the season honestly but it was like saying if you're uh like living if you're worried about the future like it's anxiety if you're worried about the past it's like you know you're like upset or sad but like, you know, just focus on the future, like the present, I mean, the present's all that matters. And, you know, it was just things like that, just like, you know, focusing on the present, like just really buying in to the one and oh mentality and like, you know, play by play, game by game, you know, not thinking about anything in the future. And it was just like, you know, if you think about, you know, the first win we got, which I don't even think is like, you know, it felt good and it was good to do that. But I don't think it was like the most pivotal moment was a uh, La Tech, and we beat them on like a game winning field goal. And, you know, it was a crazy moment that we did that, but like, we weren't really like shocked that we did it. Like, it was great to feeling to win that, but like, we were like, yeah, like that's what we do. And we, we play the type of football we're capable of. So like, you know, once we got that win and that kind of solidified us, like, you know, we can do this, like we can beat like, uh, you know, teams here. We kind of just kept that role and, you know, want to know every week, we would, you know, remind ourselves it's not about the team we're playing. It's about us. Like, it's about what we're going to do. Like, if we execute the plays that we're supposed to, like, they're not going to stop us. It's just, like, as simple as that. So, you know, we kind of adopted that mentality, you know, all the way up until, you know, middle 10, like, you know, a couple of weeks before the season is about to end, you know, you start hearing a little, like, there's buzz around, like, oh, if you guys keep winning, like, you know, you might make a bowl. Like, you know, oh, no team's ever come back from this. And, like, uh, I will say during that time, I saw something that was like uh, talking about how a team had come back one time uh, from like one and five and made a bowl game. And I was like, oh, like that's pretty interesting. Like it could be done before, like it's been done before. But, but you know, it, I we really as a whole didn't play too much into that. And it was just like, you know, take it week by week. So then, you know, we're sitting at middle 10 and we're four and six at the time and you know that was just the same model we took that game like that game really didn't go our way until the end but we just kept fighting one play at a time and then we won and then Charlotte you know was like we did I guess that was like the only week I'd say that, that like up until that week like even really that week like coach Ronnie was not addressing anything about a bowl game like he's like that's not the concern like we it's the team like you know that was how we took it as a team as well but uh we get to that week and, you know, someone said, you know, like going one and oh this week means we make a bowl game. So like, you know, like this is it, like, this is, it. this is like the ultimate, like one and oh, I think if someone said like, this is all that we were working for. So that game was, you know, like it was interesting because we were five and six, uh, Charlotte was five and six. So the winner was going to get to go to a bowl and the loser wasn't. So, you know, there was high stakes and, you know, that game, I think was like a big, the biggest representation of one and oh, because like we start out like we're hot. I, we got up like, I don't know, three touchdowns on them and then we let them come back. And it's like, we're in the, 
it's the stretch like late in the game and we're like I, it's kind of starts to hit us like if you we, we don't pull it together like our season's over and then like we we just started doing what we could do but even after that game it was like it was just like we started saying like those moments like that was really what the difference between us losing and winning was like those moments when when things like you know kind of go south or kind of go bad it was like you know like we just that's the type of team we are we're just gonna overcome it like having that confidence and like just expecting to win like expecting to make plays like like that was honestly you know the biggest difference of the team like I can say in all those games like when I see a, a ball up in like up in the air deep down the field like I'm like oh yeah like it's a catch like that's just what I think in my head like before it goes on I just think that mentality is what led us to winning and you know even like just getting to go over the Myrtle Beach Bowl like that was like a crazy ride just like the whole bull thing and like it was all new. Another thing's like it was all new to everybody at ODU because like the last bowl we went to was 2016. So even if there were people that were like still there from the bowl, they had never, they didn't play. They were registering that year. So like it was just it was cool that all of us were getting to experience that. A lot of us for the first time together. But yeah, the 2021 season in general was just a crazy ride. I'm really grateful that I got to you know be with those guys and like one thing that uh, our coach said is like every single team in college football there's like a sense of fin finality to it because there's it's like they're seniors you know just how college football works people are going to transfer people aren't going to come back the next semester so like uh one like our coach told us in the locker room after the Middle Beach Bowl like you know really soak in this moment with these guys like you know this game didn't go how we wanted to but like I know, I promise you, this group is going to be like a group that you're grateful to have been a part of and grateful to have, like, you know, met these guys. And, you know, I still do really feel about that. And it's like being able to tell that story and, like, you being a part of that and, like, looking back on, like, what we did is definitely, you know, that's crazy. And I'm really grateful that I, I was a part of that. I, I got to tell you, Leroy, I love the mentality that not only you embody, but the entire ODU team has that 1-0, win the day mentality. As, as a, a player, it's so important in order to stay in the moment to, to win each and every rep and each and every part of your day. As a fan, like I am now, I can think about the future all I want. And yeah seeing how well y'all finish the season and how much momentum you're carrying into next season. I got to tell you, I can't wait to watch some ODU football next year. I, I think that there's definitely some big things in store. And let me tell you, y'all are putting conference USA on high alert next year. I, I think you got a squad that can really compete and I'll be a fan from afar. And I know our listeners are going to be excited to see what is indeed in store for Leroy Thomas, as well as his ODU football team next year. I wanted to give you an opportunity, Leroy, as we're starting to kind of close things up uh, where can all of our listeners continue to follow you and your story throughout your remaining two years of eligibility, should you choose to use it and whatever is in store for you after football is over with inevitably, whether that's at the next level or whenever the case may be, are you on social media? Where can people follow you? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. am on uh, social media. My uh, Instagram is uh, Leroy T 25. And uh, my Twitter is the same with an underscore. So, yeah, definitely. With an I, underscore. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, uh, at Walk On Perspective, we always finish our interviews with the respective school's battle cry, or is there a chant or something that you say that r rallies the troops? Maybe it's just go ODU. I, whatever it is, I want you to give me your best version of your school's rallying cry. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I, I can't uh, remember our fight song. Our fight song is a, uh, is like a big thing, but I guess our slogan, I'll say, uh, rain on, rain on is ours. So yeah, that's what I'll say. Rain on, go Monarchs. Uh, those are definitely big ones. That's what I'll leave y'all with. Rain on indeed. Well, Leroy, thank you so very much for your time. You've been so gracious with it. I had such a great time learning more about you and your journey, and I can't wait to see what's in store. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. My pleasure. Thanks.